Now to know more about the host organization and speaker of the seminar on the Holy Scriptures, let us watch this introduction video. Shinchunji Church of Jesus, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. Shinchunji Church of Jesus, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony, commonly known as Shinchunji or SJ, which means New Heaven and New Earth, is a non denomination church established in South Korea on March 14, 1984, according to the promise of Jesus as recorded in the New Testament. Its leader, Chairman Lee Man Hee, was born in 1931 at Chongdo, Gyeongsangbokdo province of Republic of Korea. Chairman Lee did not receive any higher education due to the situation of Korea brought about by the World War II from 1939 until 1945, which was immediately followed by the Korean War from 1950 until 1953. On January 25, 2023, during his 32nd World Peace Tour, Chairman Lee Man Hee sat down with the Philippines King of Top, Mr. Boyabunda. In his interview, which can be watched on the Boyabunda Top channel on YouTube, Chairman Lee also shared the testimony on how his faith life began. He prayed to God just like what his grandfather is doing. Aside from being a war veteran, he was just a farmer. One day, he saw this great light. He can't think of another term, so sometimes he referred to it as a star. Through this, he received the gift of understanding God's word and testifies the fulfillment of the book of Revelation along with the 66 books of the Bible accordingly. Despite his age, he's continually sharing God's word to the people and even conducting Bible seminar in Korea and spreading it online. This shows his dedication and commitment through his passion in serving God and obeying His words. His heart is to serve God and spread the word of truth. Through this, the world will see the light and have the understanding coming from heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for this message from Chairman Lee Man Hee of New Heaven, New Earth. Hello everyone, I'm so happy to meet you. I am very happy. Our meeting today, I believe, is something that God has prepared beforehand. Those of you at the back, can you hear me? If you can hear me well, please raise your hands. I hope the sound of this microphone is being heard very well to all of you. This country, the Philippines, is something that is very meaningful to me. This is the first place that I came to after I received the understanding of the word. That was the Philippines. And so I am always happy to be here. I would like to briefly introduce myself. I am, I was a farmer um, in my country, Korea. This is how I have lived my life. This was before I went to the military service. 
And it was also after I uh, came out of the military service, I was always a farmer. But while I was in the military service, I was a fighter in the front lines. As you all know, and as the world knows, it was a tragic war uh, between uh, blood brothers. But surviving that kind of war was such a joyful thing for me. So every night I prayed to God and I also uh, pledged uh, a faith. But uh, the place where I was praying was a wide field. There were no people. There were no houses. It was a place where my father and I worked, just the two of us. So we were the only ones working there. And so in that place, I would pray to God in heaven. And how did I start praying this way? When I was a fighter in the front line, um, there was a war on opposite ends of the battle, and they were all really of the same people, of the same race. And so one side would bomb the other side to destroy them. And then, of course, the enemy forces would also bomb the other side. And there would be thousands of bombs just falling down. And do you think a blade of grass could survive in a situation like that? But I, I survived from a place like this. I was in the mountains, surrounded by plants, and an, an American uh, soldier approached me and took me to a plane, and this is how I was able to exit the military service. While thinking of all of this, I was so thankful that I was able to survive. And that is why I prayed to God every evening. This was a place where there were many farms. And there was a cottage there that we built so that we could farm there. And we would live there and sleep there in the cottage that we built. But one evening, It's difficult to say whether this was a person or, or what it was. I can only say that it was a light. And this light was so bright. And so I couldn't look at it. And not only that, I did not know what to do. So I ran to the room, to the cottage, and I woke up my father who was sleeping. Father, father, a star is here. That's what came out of my mouth. A star came. A star is here. And so my father came out. He saw the star, and he was very surprised as well. And he said, wow, that's so big. That is so bright. And he was so surprised. And because of that star, I made a promise to God with my blood, and this is how I began my faith life. At first, I looked for a church that I liked, living this faith life, and there were seven pastors there. And those seven pastors also slit their wrists, and they made a promise to God. That's what they did in this church. So I went there, but this place eventually became corrupted, and I did not know. I didn't want. To, I did not want to remain there. So I went back to my hometown, and there was something called the New Village Movement in my country for seven years. After that, I, 
I still am not sure if that person I met is God or Jesus. And this person came from the heavens, the skies, and came to me. And I live my faith life now based on what he told me. At that time, I went up to the mountains by myself, and I would pray there. And there were a couple of people, two, three people, that I used to go to this church with. And I told them about this. And so with that, we started doing these open Bible seminars, and many people gathered. But now, we have become this big group, uh, starting from those that small number of people. And now, I would like to make all of this known to all the people. I cannot just know this by myself, and that is why I am traveling the world and testifying the word and preaching it. But I did not really know the word of the Bible 100%. However, what I have seen and heard, I told to many people. And in my memory, I toured the world for 31 times in order to testify what I have seen and heard. I have traveled the world 31 times. And so as time passed, I was able to memorize the Word of God. And I came to know the Word of God even more. Back in the day, I just lived my faith life uh, saying that I believe but there are words of promise of God in the Bible. But I have thought deeply now more about those promises in the Bible. And those words in the Bible, have they fulfilled as reality? What is in the word? Who are the actual entities of these words? Where are they? I have to see them. I would like to touch them. I would like to talk to them. These are the thoughts that I had as I have lived my faith life. So have I met them? Have I touched them? Yes. And so with a, I have been living my faith life with a unique thought. I cannot speak about it unless I have touched it, unless I have seen it, unless I have heard it. I cannot acknowledge it. This is what I have been thinking. But this book of God, there is a book called Revelation, which is the last book. This is in this book, which is the last one in the Bible. It says that if you add and subtract from these words of the book of Revelation, you will not be able to enter heaven and you will receive plagues is what it says in Revelation verses 18 to 19 of chapter 22. And so how important is the book of Revelation to contain these words? How many people in the world actually know about this book of Revelation? Who has acted according to the book of Revelation? And so my thoughts started getting deeper and deeper. And from that time on, I was able to see the actual entities of these words. And I was able to compare. And if the word says so, then that is how it is going to happen. But I was also very curious about what the actual entities were. And if they did not appear, then faith, it was worthless. The hope that I, that I have will not fulfill is the conclusion that I came to. And so these words of promise, these prophecies, and the actual entities, that is why these things were needed. And so 
by praying and putting in the effort that I put in. Um, going back to the book of Revelation, there's about, it says there that you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven if you add or subtract from these words. This is a very thin book. And I received the understanding of this. And that is why I was able to eat the entire book. And so if you if I have understood the will of heaven, then I should act according to that will. However, that will is so enormous that it was not easy. Today, I would like to share with you what I have seen and heard and some of the words that are recorded in the book of Revelation. What I am testifying to put it broadly, uh, is two things. It could be three things, but let's put it at two. One is that th it will be the actual entities that are recorded in the book. And then the other one will be the word. So the actual entities and the word. Even if the words recorded here are so good, if these actual entities that actually fulfilled according to these words, do we need this? And so what I have seen, I have heard, what I have felt, what I have touched, the actual entities is what I came to know. But even if I have come to know the actual entities, who would believe me if I said anything about them, if I talked about them? And that was the problem. Who would believe this? But... If you are somebody who lives a faith life with this book as the standard, then if someone is testifying about the true meaning and the fulfilled reality, I would think that you would believe these words. And that is why I have put in the effort to do this. Today, we are there are many of us um, worldwide. And even in, the, in my country, Korea, there are many people who have listened and believed. Now, these, all these people in the world, if things fulfilled according to this book, then what would be the result? That's right. We would receive salvation, and we could receive uh, a very good world, and that would be great. But if you are not able to understand, and if you are not able to receive salvation, what would happen to these people? The, this is what I have been thinking about. And so in order to make this truth known, I have been preaching this to many people all over the world. Presidents in this world, um, I have met many of them. I have not met a few, but I have met many of them. And what I say to them when I meet them, I, I really only could share a few things. Now, while I was doing that, there was the COVID pandemic. So there was a pause in my travels. I was not able to travel around the world. But now the COVID pandemic is easing. Now, when the COVID pandemic came to an end, the first place that I visited was the Philippines. Pastors here in the Philippines probably remember me because I met them at that time and we talked about many things. And the pastors also answered uh, whether they would believe or not. One by one, they went up on the stage and said these things. And I believe that these pastors are alive because I don't think they are that old.
And so what I would like to say to you today, for those who are not interested in religion, this will not mean much. But those who are very interested in religion, uh, what I would say is the past is past. God prophesied about that too. He fulfilled everything and then it came to an end. And so now, there are prophecies in the Bible and there is fulfillment that I have yet to see, but did they fulfilled. There are so many people in this wide, wide world and people do many things. They have many things. However, what is asked of us human beings? What is the end of man? This is not a small thing. And so for some time, I it came to a point where I would see things even if I closed my eyes. And so I prayed to God, please stop showing me these things. I cannot handle them. Please, I would like it if you did not show me these things. I remember praying this way, but now God is the creator of heaven and earth, right? Because he is God and he created man. And what did he say to man? Prosper, be fruitful, multiply, and rule. That is what he told man to do. But the world is full of evil. And instead of keeping that promise with God, he, what God has had expected did not easily happen. The world has become so corrupted But the book that God gave, the last book that he gave is the book of Revelation. It's about 13 pages long, but this book was given to us 2,000 years ago. It's been 2,000 years since this book was given. But many people in the world existed in the 2,000 years. But no one knew the meaning of this book. This tiny book that is only about 13 pages, no one knew the true meaning of this book. But if we think about it today, you can't speak about it. And even if you told the truth about it, it's not very, it's not believable because the reality has not yet appeared. It is only when the reality appears that you can testify about the reality. And in seeing this, you can acknowledge it. You can acknowledge this. But unless this happens, how can you believe it? But I, we know that about 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to this earth and he preached the word of God. Now, what did he testify and how did he testify is what, I, is what I was thinking. In Ezekiel chapter 3, it says there, uh, Jesus preached the words that were in the book of Ezekiel, according to the book of Ezekiel. So he ate that word. He went to the rebellious house of Israel, as it is said there. And so that is what he did. That is what's recorded in Ezekiel chapter 3. And the person who did that was Jesus. Those words in the Old Testament Bible were eaten by Jesus, and he was the one who testified those words. And the people who heard these words from Jesus were the Israelites.
Now, Jesus born was is a person who was born on this earth according to the promise of God. And that person went to Jerusalem and he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I wish you knew the work of God, this work of peace. They did not know anything about the peace. They were full of greed. Greed of all kind. They were full of this. And so they ignored what Jesus was saying. They didn't listen and they didn't act according to it. They actually captured him and killed him on the cross. So, so it's been 2,000 years since that time. And so he, Jesus knew that he, that was what was going to happen to him when he came. And that is why he spoke of all of these things to the disciples. But also, Jesus promised that he will come again, that he will go and come back. That is what he promised. And it has been 2,000 years since he made that promise. Also, Jesus came and went from this earth, but he also promised a future event. And this is what is in the book of Revelation. Again, it's only about 13 pages long, but if you add and subtract from this book, it says that you cannot enter heaven and you will receive plagues or curses. And so which ones of uh, the contents of the, of the 13 page book are we talking about? This book talks about recreation as we saw at the time of Adam at Genesis chapter 1, we can see creation there. But this became corrupted. But Jesus, what he promised was recreation. And that is what it's in the book of Revelation. And so it says, the first heaven and first earth will disappear and a new heaven and new earth will be created. So did Jesus have nothing to do, which is why he came here and went through all that suffering? He clearly talked about what will happen in the future. What did he say? If we look at Matthew chapter 24, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away and they will fulfill is what he said. In the book of Revelation, it says the first heaven and first earth will pass away and a new heaven and new earth will be fulfilled. Now, anyone who is living a faith life would be interested in this, but someone with no faith life, what, what would this mean? Th this might as well be a song. But God always fulfilled all his promises that he made in the 6,000 year history of the Bible. He has promised that certain things will happen and at a certain time he has fulfilled this. And now today the promises that are made in the book of Revelation, now the time has come for them to be fulfilled. And so if there are 10 promises say and one thing fulfilled, then you would think the second would fulfill, and the third. But these things have to exist. These, the fulfillment has to be there, which will then make us believe. This world right now is in a deep sleep. And so this book of God, this book of Revelation, they do not know whether this is fulfilling or not. There is no one who knows. No one. But what I say is it has fulfilled until Revelation chapter 17. It has fulfilled until Revelation chapter 17, which means that there should be an actual entity that fulfilled according to this prophecy, this prophecy that is recorded in the Bible. There should be an actual entity, right? 
And so what I'm saying is things have fulfilled until chapter 17, which then means that Revelation chapter 18 will fulfill. God said that he will fulfill this. Now, the reason why it hasn't fulfilled yet or God hasn't fulfilled yet, and it's because there are people, it says there that there are people in a certain place and he's giving them time to come out of that place. And if we look at Matthew chapter 24, we can see words like this. I could bring things to an end and judge everything and bring things to an end now. But it is so salvation can be given in the flesh. And that is why This, the days have shortened. So if, say, there were 100 days, supposedly, they were shortened. So when did that start? When can we calculate those days? It starts at the day the promises start fulfilling. There is no specific date that is recorded. But the beginning, the day where these promises start fulfilling, would be the beginning point. And also not adding and subtracting to this book is, is also so salvation can be received in the flesh. Now, even if materially we are abundant in this world and we have a good life, what God sees is different from what we see. What God is saying and proclaiming, proclaiming is eternal life and peace. Eternal life and peace is what God is proclaiming. And so when Jesus was born, the angel said, glory in heaven and peace on earth. And this Jesus went to Jerusalem and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I wish you knew about peace. That is what Jesus said. Now these words, no matter who said it and who heard them, if these things fulfill, then at the time of fulfillment, we should be ready, right? But if it's not going to fulfill, then we have no need to think about anything. However, what I felt as I started my faith life, um, I, at the beginning, I wanted to know about the Bible. But now that I know, and I'm talking about act, the actual entities of these words, um, these are the things that I have become interested in. And so the actual entities that are recorded, I have come to know a lot of them. To what degree? Um, save for a few things, I have come to know all of them. And I have touched them. I have lived with them. I have come to know this much. People think that blessings from God is position or wealth or things like this, but God is not like that. It's eternal life. This world will become a world of heaven, and for people, it will be eternal life without death. That is what God is proclaiming and asking us to believe. And so, we must analyze God's word, word for word, and understand and believe. And, as you, and if you're not able to understand, then you will not like it and you will not believe. Now, here in the Philippines, the, the Philippines is a country that I frequent compared to other countries. God knows why I have such a deep relationship with the Philippines, why this country is so meaningful to me. 
in this world there are many people and the, the land is vast but by the grace of God we can be a new people a people of heaven and we must reveal the glory of God and through the promises of God and Jesus, we must receive salvation, right? That is what I think. And in order to do that, we should know the true meaning of these words. And we should know what these words are saying to us. We should come to know this. And when we understand and believe, I believe God will be happy. And those people who died in the history of God, there are many of them. And when we are able to truly understand and testify the truth, I believe these dead spirits will also be happy. And so let's think about the word deeply. And let's do that often. Let's think about the word of God. When I talk about the book of Revelation, who would believe me? But what is recorded in the book of Revelation, chapters 1, 2, 3, if we look at all the chapters one by one, when are these events happening? When did they happen? You, would, you might wonder this. In Revelation chapter 1, Jesus appears but not in how, not how he appeared physically when he was here thousands of years ago when he comes back to do the work of the second coming his appearance was really tremendous now what did he do he was holding seven stars in his hand and these seven stars were established as um, heads of these seven churches and so these seven stars are actually the seven messengers but what happened was these seven messengers committed sin. Jesus is the one that appointed them. Jesus is the one that brought them and appointed them. So, but why did they sin? Because the pastors of the devil called the Nicolaitans entered this place and taught them things that were not good. They fed them things were not good. It was like how Adam ate the fruit of good and evil. And so if we look at chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation, Jesus speaks to these messengers. And he also has someone send them letters asking them to repent. Those letters, I wrote them. If you ask these people who who sent you those letters, they would answer, right? And in Revelation chapter 1, verses 22, all the chapters were given or shown to one person. Jesus showed one person the events of the entire book. And so what he has seen and heard will speak of these things he will speak of what he has seen and heard. That is what's going to happen. All the events until chapter 22. Once he promises and fulfills, that's the end. It is not going to happen again and again. Once it's fulfilled, that is the end. And the order of appearance too. Those actual entities actually appear in that sequence that is promised. And so once they appear, that's the end. They're not going to appear over and over again. And so from chapters 1 to 22 of Revelation, one person gets to see this. Now, who fulfilled these prophecies? Jesus prophesied them 2,000 years ago. And he came today, and he fulfilled those things. And when he fulfilled them, is he the one that testifies? No. There is someone who sees and hears everything that is fulfilled, and Jesus tells him to go to the churches and testify. 
And so Jesus is now not the one that testifies. Someone sees everything that Jesus fulfills, and he is told to go to the churches and testify. This is Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. Also, chapter 22, verse 8. What you have seen and heard from chapter 1 to 22, there is someone who has seen everything, and that is John. It's one person. That's what it says there. Now, prophecy is something that it will be fulfilled in the future. But, and there's also a time when that prophecy is fulfilled. And what we are told is, see it when it's fulfilled and believe. And that is why the prophecy is given beforehand, so that when it fulfills, we can see and believe. And at this time, what time are we in? It is a time when Revelation is fulfilling, and more than half of it has already fulfilled. But the people of the world, they have knowledge, academic knowledge, but God and Jesus are not talking about the world, but they are talking of the things of heaven. The promises that have fulfilled is what they're talking about. And so even if a country is so secure, please think about this. Even if a country is so strong and secure, if God says, I'm bringing this to an end, then it's the end. We can see this in the Bible, right? No matter how well something is doing or a place is doing, if God ends it, then that's the end. In the four Gospels and the book of Revelation, God said, so and so will happen, and so this is what is going to happen. That is what is going to happen. And this didn't just fulfill just because it was Jesus, but God chose Jesus. God showed these things to Jesus, so he gave him the understanding of all of these things. And so if we look at the book of Matthew, it says Jesus ate the book. That's what it says in Ezekiel chapter 3. And then he went to the Israelites and testified to them. But at that time, they were a rebellious people. And when they do, he was told they will not believe you. But no matter what, they no matter how, how they respond, he was told to testify. And this is how Jesus preached this word. And now it's been 2,000 years since Jesus left. God's work is done in chunks of 2,000 years since the time of Adam. But the Bible also records that Jesus is coming back. This is the second coming. Now, how are we to acknowledge the second coming of Jesus? What Jesus has prophesied is fulfilled. That is how we can testify about this. At the time of first coming, he promised certain things will fulfill, and when he comes back, he fulfills them. And only when this happens, we can say, ah, what has promised has fulfilled, and Testifying according to this is how we can say this person is testifying according to the promise. What started in Revelation chapter 1 all the way to chapter 22 is testified by the person who has seen everything at the scene of the event. So what is recorded in the book is words of prophecy. But these words have to appear as flesh. They appear as flesh. And so what has prophesied appears as actual entities. Someone sees this and testifies. And this is the person who has seen all the actual entities that have appeared. If you have not seen this, how can you testify this? The person who testifies, testifies because he has seen. And so today, this world is quiet. It's peaceful, it's safe, and it says that Jesus comes at a time like that. 
it's safe now. There's an abundance of food. There's many entertaining things that are going on. But the objective of God is not this. His objective is to fulfill His will. And so this book called the Bible, the words that are in there, these prophecies that are promised, if they do not fulfill them, this book is useless. Why would we need this book as religious people? But if these words, if we do not add or subtract, if everything fulfills without adding or subtracting, then there is no better book in the world. If we look at Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 to 19, it says, if you add or subtract from the words, you will not enter heaven. Let's, let's talk about just the Christians. Is there anyone who did not add or subtract? I don't think so. Today, what evidence we have, it, in order to believe even more is that the actual entities actually appeared in Revelation chapters 2 to 3 the seven messengers who are appointed by Jesus are there and there are the Nicolaitans who fed them um, like how Adam ate the fruit of good and evil and so because of they did that they sin and so these actual entities actually appeared and did this and the person who was there actually saw this if he did not see, then he won't be able to say anything. But he was there and saw all this, and that is why he can testify. This is, so in chapters 2 to 3, again, the seven messengers who Jesus appointed are there. The devil the devil's pastors who fed them food sacrificed idols are there and so Jesus chose someone and asked him to send letters to these people so these people all have to appear in order for us to say the actual entities of these words appeared right and so if I am sure that I have eternal life and I can go to heaven according to the Bible then I should know, I should check whether these are the actual entities that actually fulfilled according to these words. The objective of our faith life is in order to fulfill our hope, to enter heaven and have eternal life. It's not to make money. Isn't that right? So we must not live our life of faith anymore like we used to back in the day. We have to verify, we have to check, and then decide whether we believe or not. But in Revelation chapter 6, the events there, how do these things happen? This person, John, writes the letters according to chapters 2 to 3, and the person who asked them to send the letter calls him up to heaven. He is called up to go to heaven. And so he goes up there, and there is a book in God's hand. There is a book that he's holding. And this book cannot be opened or read by anyone on earth or below the earth. So this person went up to heaven and he cried because of this. And while he was crying, Jesus came and got the book from the hand of God. And in Revelation chapter 6, he removes the seals one by one. And the actual entities appear. Every time a seal is removed, the actual entities appear. And so if, you, if the seals are not removed, the entities wouldn't appear either. And so the sun, moon, and stars of the first heaven and first earth come to an end in chapter 6. That is how it ends. And then after that, so when we see after that, the words after that, it lets us know the events that come before and after. It's like a marker. So in chapter 6, in Revelation chapter 7 rather, there is the work of sealing. 
the work of sealing is uh, started in chapter 7. And what does this mean to seal? What is used to seal? What does it mean to be sealed? And if you're not sealed, what does that mean? Is it like stamping? If we stamp something, we can see that exact mark on the thing. So if a person is sealed, you can see. or And so we can say that, you know, we, our church is a traditional church. We are doing well. But that's your thought. But things have to happen according to how it's promised in the Bible. And so in chapter 7 of Revelation, the work of sealing begins. The one who is not sealed is useless. But those who are sealed, it's like a, the OK signal from God. And this person can be a family member of God. And this person can be saved. And this person can go to heaven. And so someone comes to seal. And there are those who are sealed. The number of those who are sealed is 144,000. And a little after that, we have the great multitude in white. So the great multitude in white and the 144,000, aside from them, the book of Revelation and Bible doesn't say that there are people that are saved aside from these people. Those who enter heaven and are saved are those who are sealed, like we can see in Revelation chapter 7. And so those who are sealed, you can tell, right? And they are sealed because someone is actually doing the work of sealing. And the one who's sealed would know this person and that person has been sealed. There would be a list of names. And for someone who's sealed, who's not sealed, can't just say that he was sealed. We can, we can know if we have an exam. One who is sealed knows the answers and will be able to put down the answer. But someone who is not sealed would not be able to give the answer. And this is how you can tell them apart. The one who is sealed goes to heaven, has eternal life, can be a family member of God and live with God. But the one who is not sealed has no relation to God. Even if this person is smart and talented, this is not what God is looking for. You must be sealed. Because if we look at Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 to 19, it says, you add or subtract, and you will receive plagues. Why do you think those words are there? If we deduct a line, a word, this must not happen, because it will fulfill exactly according to this. So if you have someone here who is go who goes to Shinshinji Church, if you ask them if they are sealed, what do you think they will say? Someone who is not sealed, it will be very easy to tell. But the events of the book of Revelation from chapters 1 to 22 is recorded in the heart of someone who is sealed. That is someone who is sealed. And so this person can be a walking book of Revelation. What Jesus has said would be in this person. What God has said would be in that person. And so someone who is born of God's seed, what is God's seed? In the Bible, it says it is God's word. That is what God's seed is. And so if one is born of God's seed and is sealed by God, then these words are recorded in this person's heart is what that means. And so that person would be a walking word. Jesus was also the walking word, right? Jesus ate the word. He, op he received the book and ate it is what it says in Ezekiel chapter 3. You can see this. And so in Revelation chapter 10, someone also eats this book. 
receives the book and eats it. That means that these words are recorded in his heart. This book was in God's hand. But who, who did he give this to? To Jesus. And Jesus received this book, and then he judges according to Revelation chapter 6, and then in chapter 7, with this word, he sealed. Meaning, he inscribed these words in the hearts of people. And these words are, and because these words are inscribed in the hearts of these people, and so if this person starts walking, then it's like the word that is walking. God and Jesus were also like this. And so it's not just any other, it's not, it's not like any other book. But if these words are inscribed in our hearts, then we can be the walking book of Revelation, and we can be those who are 100% sealed. And so we have to distinguish what is distinguished is who is sealed and who is not sealed, and that is what's recorded in this book. And so we must not boast about the little that we know, but we must be those who know 100%. We must be the book of the Bible. I have to be the kind of person with the word inscribed in my heart and absolutely born again by this word or the seed of God. We must be the kind of we must be the person who is born of God's seed and become a person of God. And this is not that hard is what I'm saying. It's not it's not that hard. You know people are very um, it's very easy to say for them to sing songs that are popular songs. But what we're talking about now is eternal life and heaven. This is not a small thing, so we have to know this. And so what I would like to tell you today is that this revealed word, let's record it in our hearts and become the walking Bibles ourselves, not just who believe superficially, because we don't need that. We have to record the words in our hearts, and when we do that, it becomes the food for our hearts. Isn't that great? And it says that this word is light and it's life. In John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, if you read that, it says the word is at the beginning, and th this word is God. And all creation was created by this word. And this word is light and it is life, is what it says in verse 4. And so if these words are recorded in us, in our hearts, then we can be the walking Bibles. And because the word is life and because it is light, I can be a child of light. And I can be a child who has life. We should not take eternal life for granted. If we look at John chapter 15, it says that you are clean because of the words that I have spoken to you. And so if the word is in us, then we have life. Then it can help us. And it can help us understand all things. If we do not have the word, then we are nothing. And so let us record these words in our hearts. The first thing is not to add or subtract from the book of Revelation because it says that we will not be able to enter heaven if we do that. So let's make sure that we record these words in our hearts. Next, if we look at Revelation, there are beasts. These beasts with seven heads and ten horns. You can read about them. And there is also the pastor of God. In Revelation chapter 12, there is a male child, and he will be the ruler of all things, is what it says. And then, the, the male child and his brothers actually fight and overcome the group of the dragon, and it is only then that there is God's kingdom and God's salvation. And so, if these things don't happen, then how can we say that we are saved? We have no evidence for this. Why do we say that we are saved? Please, please prove this according to the Bible. 
And so they fought and overcame the group of the dragon. And that is why God's kingdom and God's salvation exists. It did not exist prior to that. And the dragon is kicked out from the, the kingdom of heaven. So that is what we see in Revelation chapters 2 to 3, to overcome, to overcome. And so we must not live a faith life just by words, but we must be the actual entities of a believer. This is a wonderful thing. If we have the word in us, this word will guide us. And no matter where I am, it will protect me. God will protect me. God is the word and Jesus is the word is what it says in the Bible. Who are God and Jesus? It, they are the word. And so these words must be inscribed in our hearts and we must be the words ourselves, right? And by doing that, we can be the family of God and we can live with God in heaven. That is how we can be qualified to do that. So at first, like I said, I prayed and this light came to me and it guided me. And then when I received this word, I was in a position to be born again through that word. I was in the mountains, I was living in the mountains. And not just me, but many people have gone through much suffering. The disciples were also kicked out of their own countries, right? And still they lived their life of faith. And so I have confirmed what is contained in the book of Revelation. I went to the places where the disciples lived, the places where they stood and preached, where Jesus preached. I also went there and I preached there. I gave lectures there and I did everything that is recorded in the Bible, the things that have been done before. I also been to the island of Patmos because of the book of Revelation. That is where this was recorded. And so I really risked my life. I told myself, even if I risk my life, I will go there. But in the end, what I really wanted to know was the actual entities of these words that are recorded because it is only when they appear that we can either go to heaven or hell. And so I look for these actual entities. Do you know the actual entities of Revelation chapters 2 to 3? There are seven messengers there. I know them well. Do you know the people who fed them the food sacrificed to idols? I know them well. I know his face. I know his name. I know everything. And so in order to testify the book of Revelation, you should know the actual entities of this book, right? Because if we don't, we have to know every single thing in order for the devil not to sow his seed and for things to be corrupted again. If we look at Revelation chapter 6, when the seals are removed and people there are punished, I know those people too. In Revelation chapter 7, those who are sealed, I know those people as well. I know all of them. The word has become flesh. When the, when the time comes for their fulfillment, the actual entities actually fulfill and appear. And this is how we can have a sure faith, a faith that we can touch. I believe, I believe this. And so our faith, let's not live the, la the life of faith of our past where we just say we believe, but now let's live a faith where we put things to action, truly. This is what I say. 
in Korea, there are many pastors there as well. And so I, I asked them to come and we, and I talked to them. And when they come, and if I give them an exam, you would know who's better, right? And so through this process, these people have to master the book of Revelation, meaning you have eaten the whole book. That is what it means to master it, to have eaten the whole book. And so let us be the children of God and Jesus who will not be, who will not be ashamed for anything. Let us have those qualifications. Let's do that. But just saying you believe will not do. I believe there are many pastors here as well. But I told you about the book of Revelation, right? God's work has fulfilled until Revelation chapter 17. This is not the first time I have said this. Now, what has fulfilled and what is yet to fulfill? We must know this. The objective is to go to heaven and have eternal life. Because without these things, then why, why should we live this faith life and go through all the suffering? And we cannot miss a single thing. And if we do not know, then we will lose our faith as well, what, what we are hoping for as well. So we have to know every single thing. So I wrote those letters and sent them to the churches so that the pastors can read them, is what I say. And if there is anything wrong, please let me know, is what I say. If there are any mistakes, Please let them know, but please send this out. I, I do this so that they can read and they can think more about this. And I, the hope is that they will understand more and their faith life will become much better. The objective also today is to become one to work together and to help one another so that we can fulfill our faith, our hope, rather. There, I'm, I'm sure there's a reason why God gave me this special relationship with the Philippines. I wouldn't also be here if I did not have this history with the Philippines. But if we understand the word more and more, it becomes sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and it is full of hope. And so let's come to know this. I hope the pastors can put in more effort so that all of us can fulfill our hope. God fulfills everything he promised, right? If we look back, all, he, all the things he promised, he fulfilled. And now today, the events in the book of Revelation will fulfill according to what is recorded. Now those who are who would say not to believe in the kingdom of God? God, through absolute believers, will do his work. And so in Revelation chapter 21, it says the first heaven and first earth will disappear and there will be a new heaven and new earth that is created. In the four gospels, it says in Matthew chapter eight, that people will come from the east and west and sit in heaven, but the subjects of this kingdom of heaven will be thrown out where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why is that? Because you only think of 
your thing, this one thing, and not think about anything else. And so these people are thrown out, but those people who come from east and west, these are the ones who are harvested one by one. Jesus harvests. And at the time of second coming, what does it say in Matthew chapter 24? After Jerusalem is destroyed, Jesus will come with the angels. He will send them to the east, the west, the north, and south, and harvest people. Jerusalem will be destroyed. The destroyer will stand there. Then Jesus will come with the angels, and he will send them out so that they can bring people. That is the sequence of events. So it's very clearly written that this is how the events will fulfill in that sequence. And so if we are believers and if we believe this word, then we must follow this word. If we are not able to, we cannot fulfill our, our hope. And so we must, please, if you want to know anything, if you'd like to share anything, let's exchange contact details and communicate and get to know one another better. Things are not going to happen overnight. And so let's, let's pray to God and let's create this kingdom of heaven and receive God. Let us exchange letters and communicate with one another. Let's not hurt one another or persecute one another. Let's now humble ourselves. Let's humble ourselves more and more. Let's respect one another. And if we do that, and I'm sure that our love will grow. That would be a better way to do things, right? In Revelations, in Revelation chapters two to three, the letters, if we ask the person who has received them, they would know. And after those letters are sent, this person, when he wrote the letters, he was called to come up to heaven. And what did he see there? He saw God's throne in Revelation chapter 4. And he heard that this God's throne will come down to earth. And in Revelation chapter 5, God is holding a book in one hand. And no one could understand this book. But John was up in heaven. But, no one, but when he heard that no one could know this book, he cried. He wept. And at that moment, someone came up to him and said, don't cry. Jesus came and then took the book from God. And in chapter 6, he removed the seals. And when he removed the seals, the chosen people, not the betrayers or destroyers, but people who say they believe in God, in chapter 6, they are destroyed. They are taken care of. The sun, moon, and stars are the chosen people. The sun, moon, and star stars are chosen people, and they come to an end in chapter 6. That means that a corrupted generation comes to an end. After that, in Revelation chapter 7, is the work of sealing. In chapter 7, chapter 7 is in the book of Revelation. Also chapter 6, they're both in the book of Revelation. So these are events that happen during the time of Revelation. And these are entities that actually exist. And so I have explained how all of these things happen one by one. And when these things happen, when the ceiling is finished, the great multitude in white realizes what happens and they come. And then we go to Revelation chapter 8. And in chapter 8, there are people who have worked very hard for the work of God. But 
In chapter 8, they are thrown out. Now, in chapter 7, those people there, the people in chapter 7 who are sealed after the events of Revelation chapter 6, God's throne is with those people. The ones in chapter 6 are those who are in chapter 8. But in between, we can see that God's throne is there. And so in chapter 7, those who are sealed, God's throne is with them, not anywhere else. These people also appear in chapter 15. God is with them, and so all nations come and worship there. There is nothing in this book that is wrong. This is absolute, this is absolute and everything is recorded in detail. Now, this is the last work of God, so he has to bring it to an end. We, can, we cannot set the standard for what is true or false. The time has come now for us to distinguish what is distinguished clearly. And through those who are sealed, a new generation is ushered in. And God, who left long, long time ago, comes in Revelation chapter 19. And also the people and the spirits who belong to God. The people here on earth are like the brides, and the spirits are like the grooms. And they become one. And this is called a wedding. This is a marriage. It is, a, it is the spirit and flesh becoming one. And so in Revelation chapter 18, the troops of the devil also have to be taken care of. And so only those who are acknowledged by God remain, and God comes to them. The angels are there. And the kingdom of heaven comes to these people. And so God has recorded every single thing in detail that is supposed to fulfill in this book. And so even if we read this and say we do not know, if you, if you write to someone, they will let you know. You can learn about this. You can hear about this. You can listen. In whatever way possible, we have to master it. And so you can decide later on if you believe or not. But you must look into this. Yesterday, in Seoul, there was a gathering of many religious leaders. I heard Buddhists, Christians. And when they also learn about this, I'm sure they'll be very happy. Right now, they do not know, and they live a, this faith life, and they are living their lives. But we're talking about the Word of God. God isn't foolish, right? This is, so of course this is very clear and well written. And so put, let's put these words in our hearts and let us become one in order to enter heaven and to receive eternal life. We have put in a lot of effort for this, right? Let us not let these efforts go to vain or be in vain. I believe this kingdom of heaven must fulfill, right? And so if we put in the best effort, then I believe that things will go well. We have met here today, but what I but my duty is to tell you what I have seen and heard. I saw, I heard, I touched things that are in reality. These are the things that I am telling you and sharing with you, and that is my duty. That is my task. If you ask me, I will tell you hundreds, thousands of times. You can ask me, who is this? Then I will show you a Bible verse and tell you.
And so even if you don't know and you say these and you say this and that and you destroy the work of God, you shouldn't do that, right? Many people, we, we all needed the Bible in order to receive salvation. And so we must know it properly. We have to know what has been revealed. And so the Bible, when everything is fulfilled in the Bible, then the Bible would also have done everything that it is tasked to do. And so let's become one. God will be happy to see that. People will be happy to see that. And we will be happy because of our hope. Let's do that. That would be the best way, right? We must do this. We can't just say this and that and say amen, amen. This is the time of the reality. What is promised, what is prophesied, the reality for those promises have come. And so in the book of Revelation, we see things like the beast with seven heads and ten horns, the seven messengers. These people have appeared as reality, and that is what I'm telling you to know. These entities that are spoken of in the Bible, we must we must know this, right? And so when God gives us these words that are recorded in the Bible, the reason is because he wants us to see it and believe, right? I think I think too much time has passed now. <laughs> So the Philippines, let's become one in God and let's, let's do this work. I love the Philippines. The Philippines is so close to my heart. Let us all become the children of God and live in heaven. Thank you. Let's pray. Please join me in prayer. God, our Father God, who we are so grateful to, I have come to the Philippines today and I have met these people in the Philippines and I have testified your word, Father. Father, you have promised the things that you will fulfill in the book of Revelation. And I have seen this, Father God, and I want to share this with these people, Father God, that these things have fulfilled. Please let these people know, Father God, who are in the east and west and north and south, what has fulfilled, Father God. This is what I desire. And what has started in the Philippines, Father God, has come to this point. I pray that you will gather them as brothers and as one family in you. Please fill us with grace and love, Father God, and help us to become one. And I pray that your glory will be revealed here in the Philippines and that it will reach all the way to heaven and that you will bless us because of this and that you will be with us, Father God. All of this, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chairman Lee, for generously sharing the message according to the Holy Bible. Again, Chairman Lee loves the Philippines so much. This is his 12th visit. 